Hi everyone, Donna McElvaney here, and today we're going to do planned pulling with Bright Mix. Um, I don't have it in the actual skein because I had crocheted it and I didn't have another skein to do it with, so I actually frogged the whole thing. So there she is in all her glory. Bright Mix, yeah, I did that. Okay, so um, what we're going to do is, since this one can be a little bit confusing and a whole lot to do with it. Um, I'm just going to jump right in there. And I don't recall what was the um, the label on the actual package shown, but I do believe that I used my H hook on it. So I'm going to go with that. And I learned with Bright Mix, you're going to go through 30 color changes, 30 bright color changes. I'm going to go ahead and count that green as one, and I don't count the short black segments, just the bright colors. So we're going to go through 30 of them. There is a long black section, and that is going to be counted as one of the 30. All right, so we're going to go through here, and it's 30 of them before it begins to repeat. So you have to make sure you go through all 30 of them. So I'm just going to truck along here. I'm gonna go through 30. Um, I had done this a while back and I had posted some pictures of it. Um, some people wanted some videos, wanted a video done on it. And I actually did it in segments as I actually crocheted it. And I did it in segments because it was so long. Um, but unfortunately, I could not get all those segments to load. So I'm just gonna whip through this one here pretty quick just to get through it. Uh, just so that people can actually watch it and hopefully it helps them get through their bright mix. I wasn't a fan of this one at all. I was not going to get it and then somebody asked me if I had done it, if I had it. So I broke down and went to the store and I'm like, ah. So I went ahead and I picked it up um, and I crocheted it. And you know what? I actually love it. Um, I wasn't a fan of all these bright colors and stuff and all these short little spots of black that was in it. It looked like just an absolute nightmare. But actually, um, I'm in love with it. I'm going to make this one into a blanket too. I have an idea of, I've got an idea of, of who to give it to for Christmas. This is actually going to be like all the Christmas presents this year is going to be planned pulled blankets, um, Afghan throws. Um, I've made several already, uh, and I really, really like it. I really enjoy it. So you're going to go through 30 bright colors before you come to the repeat. And I haven't been counting. I've just been crocheting along here. And in this one here, I don't keep count of the colors. Yeah, I'm not to 30 yet. I don't keep track of my color count because there's just too many of them. Um, you know, like the third orange is going to have four, but the second bright orange only has two. So in this one here, I'm actually not going to be counting except my first two rows. They are a mirror image of each other. So that's where I'm going to get my base count from. And then once I begin my third row, the third row is one offset of your first row. And once you get to the third row, then you should be okay. Um, you shouldn't have to, to really count. Then you're just gonna make sure that you're up one and over one. And that's how you're gonna do your count. Because there's just really no way to write all these down on paper. And I'm just trugging along here, 30 of them. I really wish that I could pause my videos and stuff. Um, I'm not that YouTube tech savvy at the moment. And I record all of these on my phone and cause they load up easier that way for me. So I apologize for that. This is just the way that I gotta do it. So bear with me. Um, maybe if I get somebody who's really awesome with YouTube can just take my videos and and do that for me. And uh, I know a couple people who might be able to do that. All right, so I'm gonna count from the beginning here. I'm counting this green as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. You gotta get to 30. All right, so I gotta need 10 more. One, two, three, four, five, All right, this is that long black segment that has just a spot of bright pink in it. This is, I count this one as a color. So that one's six, and this yellow is seven. Eight. Nine. And this yellow is 10, and then I should be back to the... No, I started with green. Let's see, that was 10. It goes green, green, orange, pink, green. This is number 11. If I counted that black segment, this is segment 11. And then here I've got green, orange, pink, green. All right, so now I am starting the repeat. So if I counted that black segment, then it looks like I've got 31. Let me double check that. Okay, one. So we've got green, orange, pink, green, blue. And now I'm coming into green, orange, pink, green, and blue. Okay, you wanna go about five or six of them just to make sure that they are actually repeating. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, if I count that black with a splash of pink. It's 31 segments, not just 30. Okay, I wanna make sure that green is on my hook, which is my first color. Whatever your first color starting is, you want that one to be on your hook whenever you turn and chain. When you turn your chain, here that is kind of split it's got more black on it so I'm gonna make it more black on it all right so green one two three fourth one from the hook and we're gonna start our moss stitch which is all right single crochet chain skip one single crochet chain skip one looks like there's well, two stitches of that green we go into the black and I'm definitely going to try and pause this segment because this is going to take absolutely forever if I don't all right so I'm going to definitely try and pause it um, and edit out the video maybe I did this with my eye hook Because right now it's just going to be recording because I can't pause it at the moment because I can't put two videos together on YouTube that I haven't figured that one out yet it only loads up one at a time okay after all that I believe I'm going to use my eye hook Because the colors just weren't coming out right. One, two, three, four. 
I switched to my eye hook because I think it's going to go smoother, more smoothly. Maybe, maybe not. Yes, it is. I switched to my eye hook. I'm going to be moss stitching this all the way down. So I will definitely be editing the video, pausing it. Because this is why I did it in segments, because it takes forever. Especially doing this first row. I'm pretty quick with doing the moss stitch and doing the plan pulling. But that first foundation row, it does take me a little while to really get it. Because you got to be so careful getting into them. And here, I'm not counting my my stitches. I am just going through and moss stitching and making sure I don't have muddy legs. Trying to also make sure that the transition color on my hook is the next solid color as well. It just makes it look nicer. I have several projects where this color here is muddy. Um, and that's kind of normal, but whenever the full project is done, you can see it going across the top of some stitches and I don't like it so much but in a lot of the stuff it's just you just can't help it like that stitch there is what I mean going into the next color because it's at the top it's kind of like, like the top part of your leg stitch the moss stitch itself um, it's the top of the legs and it's nice and neat whenever it's the same color but sometimes it's not. It still has some of the previous color in it. And for me, it's just, it's just going to happen. I don't know if you have more success at that than I do. Then that's awesome. I don't have a greatest success at it. But in the bright mix, I do. Um, they tend to go really well. And I did switch to my eye hook for that reason. Flip around the back, make sure it's not muddy. I don't check all of them, just whenever I think it's a little bit muddy going into it, I, I want to turn to the back side as well. Make sure it's not muddy on that side either. Alright, so this is planned pulling with Brimax.
right, so here we are, and I've gone through 30 of them. Still have a long tail left, so whenever you're crocheting, whenever you're doing your moss stitch row, you can just keep going and going and going because it goes on forever. Um, and this tail is quite long, so make sure that you stop um, and count. Make sure you know where you're at here. So I've got, I've got 30 now, well, 31. Um, if you count that black section, um, 30 if you don't. I'm starting back here with the green. Green, orange, pink, green, blue. And then all the way through, I've counted, and I've counted all this moss stitch row. And here I am, and I am back to green, orange, pink, green, blue. And that's where I need to go. Double check, green, orange, pink, green, blue. Okay. So now we have got, we're starting with the green, but that's not where we want to start. Whenever we start, begin going across with our second moss stitch row. So green is the beginning of our next color. So whenever it's on our hook, what do we do? We go ahead and we pull back one more stitch because this is now going to be part of the turning chain, that black is. And then I'm going to want to land with the green legs. So usually in my other videos, I do a modified puff stitch here on the long tail chain side. Um, with this yarn here though, I don't think it's going to be necessary because there's not as long of colors for the change. Um, the segments aren't as long, so a lot of times you don't have to eat up a whole lot of extra yarn. Um, if you do have to do a modified, then you pull back one extra. Make that one into a modified to eat up some of the extra yarn. But see, if I do that, then I'm already into the green. And with the green, now is when I look back at the beginning of where I did. Okay, because it's a mirror image, so the green is two stitches. I'm gonna see if I can get two stitches out of this since I did that modified. One, Yes, I can. Okay. And two green. That's what you want on your very first row. You want to have two green stitches. And now I want two orange. So I'm going to do the black stitch. There's always a black in between. And then I'm going to do two orange. One. And that one's going to be muddy. I can tell it's too short, so I'm going to go ahead and back up a bit and tighten these up some because I need two orange stitches. There's the black one, and I need two orange. One and two. Great. And then I'm going to have one black. And then I'm going to look at this row to see how many pink I've got. I've got four pink. One, two, three, four. All right, so do four pink. One, two, three, and four. And a black and the green. I've got three green and how many blue? One, two, three, four blue. So three green and four blue. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. green, one black, 
and four blue. One, two, three, and four, and one black. Okay, so I had the green and the blue, and now I'm going into three pink and four orange. Which one am I going here? Going this way. Three pink and four orange. One, two, three pink, one black, and four orange. I had switched to my eye hook and I'm not having to adjust tension very often. I'm not having to switch hook sizes. Um, so I think the eye hook it was my better choice. All right, now I gotta remember where I was here. I had three pink, four orange, three bright yellow, four blue, yeah, three yellow, one, two, three, looks like it's going pretty steady. And four blue. I'm pretty sure they're all gonna land correctly, but I'm gonna I'm gonna check just to make sure. Cause here in a minute I'm gonna cross over. Alright. yellow four blue and is this where I'm going into the green yes it is green and pink yes so green and pink one two three four one two three one two three one two three four I had three and three. One, two, three, black. I believe it was three blue. One. I'm going sideways, sorry. I'm going to continue doing this all the way across, uh, making sure that the one color segments line up with the other. They're a mirror image. How I did the first row is exactly how I do the second row. They're just going in opposite direction. This was four, and I believe I had two pink stitches. Yep, and here we are at the crossover. I was coming this way with my four orange, four orange, two pink, and now I have two pink and a black. And now I'm gonna have two yellow, three, three green, three blue, three yellow. So two, three, 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 four, three. 
Alright, so two. And then three. And then three of the blue. Three of the yellow. And four of the orange. And I believe three of the blue. Three blue, two green. So yeah, three blue, three, two, three, three, two, two. Okay. Yeah, like I remember that. Huh. Three. Three or two of the blue. I thought I said three. Pretty sure I had three blue. Yes, three blue and two green. So I'm gonna have to tighten that up, but I'm glad I paid attention. Two green. yellow be glad when this row is done three yellow yep three yellow three blue two 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 three so I'm going to have to loosen them up There we go. Did I say three blue or two? Oh, it looks like three. And I think I said two green, but I do want to make sure though. Two green, two orange. And then it's that longer black segment with a splash of pink. Where am I? There's a splash of pink. So I had three yellow, three blue, two green, two orange. Three yellow, three blue, two green, two orange. Good. And then there's the splash there. Two yellow, three pink, three orange, three yellow.
Okay, yellow. More. Yes. Three pink. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We are almost to the end of this row. say see I forget sorry three pink three three two three pink three three and two so let's tighten that up to get three orange out of it that's so why I had to go back and check because I either had to tighten it or I had to loosen it so I wanted to make sure I had the correct count. That one's muddy. Yep. And I'm just going along. Three yellow. black and two orange yay two orange now then we have a black one so we're fixing to make our turn but the non tail side all your legs have to land so this black stitch has to land so it has to go in this first segment here Okay, and then you can see right here that my green, first green goes here, and my second green goes here. So on this third row, you can see that we are already lining up correctly. And that's exactly the way it should be. You should see your pulling begin by your third row. All right, so there's two green, and there's two green. And then here's the black stitch. It's gonna be really hard to determine your black stitches right off. So, because they're just a single stitch and they're scattered, they're all over the place. So see, I got two black here and I got a black way over here. And this black actually goes with that one. And they're just scattered. So keep up with the bright colors. All right, so I've got two orange and then my first orange is gonna land here and here. So I'm up one and over one. And that is correct. That is where I'm wanting to be. And pulling is that easy. Once you get your, your first your first turn correct and then your second turn correct and you're doing a mirror image of each row, then you've got it. You've got it down. You are good to go. All right, so this black stitch landed above the hot pink. So my first hot pink is gonna be here, which is exactly where I want it to be. And I'm gonna have four of them. So one, two, three and four and a black stitch right above this bright fluorescent green I'm gonna have three greens one two and three Once you get pulling down, you should be able to pick up any variegated yarn that does pull. Identify its repeating pattern sequence and you should be able to pick it up and pull it right away. I'm just going to keep on going here. And see, I see I had a blue here and a blue here and my next color is black and I'm just going to keep on trudging along here. Alright, I got pink. And I can see I need two more pink. I tighten it up a little bit to make it a full pink stitch. All right. And then I've got four oranges. Once you see that you're 
that you're doing this on your third row, then you know you got it. I'm going to work down to the end of this and then I'm going to show the turning chain. I realize a lot of people lose it in the turns. Um, that was my biggest problem whenever I was first pulling was, and I knew I was losing it somewhere and it had to be the turns because the sides, each turn was coming out different. One turn was the same on one side and the other turn was different and I just couldn't understand that. And then I figured it out that it was definitely getting lost in the turns. Okay, so, and this is a crossover section. I've got blue going this way and I've got my first row going this way and my third row going this way, so it's a bunch of blue. So you have to make sure that you look at the first row and the third row. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I know that that's correct. I'm gonna move on to the next one and see, to verify it, I check with my green and yep, my green starts here, so I'm good to go. Whenever your colors cross over like that, it's good to count your stitches right there to make sure that your count is correct. Once your count is correct, line it up with the next one. I'm gonna have to plug my phone in because it's telling me it's gonna die. I've been recording on it too long. Alrighty. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to do that. So that means I'm also gonna have to change how I'm crocheting. Where my phone is anyway. Maybe you can see it better this way anyway. All right, so I've got three pinks and I know I've got three pinks. Sorry, it makes it difficult for me to see it now. also changes my tension. I wind up crocheting tighter when I'm like this. We've got blues right here and so my first one goes here. If you guys can see this, I'm kind of stretching out and pulling it and showing you as I'm just going along here. This is another blue crossover section, but I'm looking at this blue and this blue. I'm not paying attention to this middle blue here, but it is three stitches. And so it's one, two, and three. And into the black. And then the yellow is correct.
And another blue crossover where it's a lot of blue there. But I'm just going to keep on going and look on to the green. Make sure my green is right. And yes, it is. So you see two green and then one, two green. And this is a yellow crossover. You won't necessarily start at the same point that I started at. And actually, you probably shouldn't start at the same point I did. I'm just going to pull this back a bit because I've got a bit too much yellow here. And I'm supposed to have one, two, three yellow stitches. So I'm going to make it a little bit more loose. Yeah, with 30 bright color changes and there's a long segment of black in there yeah if we started out with on the very same place I'd be really surprised so just as long as you count out 30 of the bright colors and then there's an additional black sorry I was kind of up there in the rafters a little bit I'm supposed to have three blue, so I'm going to have to tighten this in that. Two green. Two orange. I'm going to pull it out though because it's getting, I'm going to wind up getting muddy down the road so I need to go ahead and loosen them up more to eat up more of the yarn so that it's a little bit more definitive in the color here. Two orange. Okay. And then this is the black section, which I believe was two. Two on that black section with the splash of pink. And two yellow, so yes, that was correct. And three pink. I went ahead and left this part of the video long. Um, I didn't edit this part out so that you could see it going, going all the way across it and see how it lines up all the way for anybody who still has problems with pooling. Because here I'm going into black, but I've got three orange, so I need to tighten these ones up. Originally, I probably should have loosened it and made it two because this is the second time I've come to this orange section and I work it to only be two, but it's supposed to be three. So I just tighten it up there and make it three. Originally, it probably should have only been two, but that's okay. We just have to watch it and make sure we keep it at the same count. Three orange. Sorry if I get a little bit close to my camera there. I've got it propped up on my cup. It's laying across the lid of my cup, so every now and then I really go astray with it. I apologize. Okay, so this is the long tail chain side. On this one here, one of your legs is going to get ate up in the turning chain, so all your legs are not going to land. And it looks like I'm only supposed to have two 
orange legs. So I'm only going to have one orange leg that lands. And then the next orange leg is going to be in the turning chain. And then so the next stitch that's going to land is going to be the black color. One, two, turn, black. A lot of times I will do a modified puff stitch here. And I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave it just like that. And as we can see, on the opposite end, I had the two orange and the black was the first landing stitch and then two green. And here you see, I have one, two orange. The black is the first landing stitch and then I'm gonna have two green. One and two. All right, and then black. And now I'm looking at right here. Let me get this other out of the way here. Okay, and then I'm looking at this right here. I have the orange. One and two. And that is it, guys. One, two, three, four. As you can see, I'm lining it up with here. So keep it correct on your chains, on your turning chains, and land your legs correctly where they go. And you shouldn't have any problem now with your bright mix. It should be great. As you can see, I'm going into the green. It's gonna be one, two, and three. So, the long tail, chain tail side, one of your legs is eight up in the turning chain. So, one of your legs is not going to land. It's going to be in, in the chain. But on the non-tail side, all your legs have to land. I know this first one looks a little bit funky. That was the fourth one from the chain. That's why it's wider. Um, but once it's pulled and stuff, once... You put a border on it or you add fringe to it if it's a scarf um, it's not going to be seen it's not going to be noticed and that's the way it's done with the moss stitch um, on this side all your legs have to land and on this side one of your legs is going to be eight up in the chain and one of your legs is not going to land it's going to be kind of up in the air all right guys uh, god bless i hope that this helps you and stuff um if you have any questions, you can follow me, you can message me, you can find me on Facebook, Donna McElvaney, and uh, I hope this helps. Thanks.